Now, let's discuss for point of order why Torah, why Orit, why Torah is so important. Why is Torah important and why is it fundamental for us? Let's go to Deuteronomy 6 and 4. Let's write this down, please. Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy, actually 4 and 6. 4 and 6. 4, chapter 4, verse 6. And let us put this word right here underneath. Wisdom. Wisdom. Deuteronomy 4 and 6. In Deuteronomy 4 and 6, and we're going to go from the English first, um, King James, Deuteronomy 4 and 6, it says, now, put this into context, and we're using Schofield Study, Schofield Reference Bible, it says, this is the subsection, chapter 4, that says, the new generation is taught, a new generation is taught the lesson of Sina, or Sinai, a new generation is taught the lesson of of Sinai in Deuteronomy 4, chapter 4. Now at verse 6 it says, Keep therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all the statutes and say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding is a wise and understanding people. Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now, Bamarinya, according to the Mets of Caduce of Negus and Neges, Orit Zedagim, Deuteronomy, or the Orit of the repetition Zedagim, chapter Mi'raf Arat Kutir Sedist, it says, Tabukuat Adara Guatem Yehichina Sir Art Hulu Samto Baunet Ye Talaka his Tabibina Astawai his Bino Bemilu Beahazaba Fita Tibabachu Huna Master Walachu Ye No Winna. Now in the Modern Jewish um, Torah, uh, Synagogue Torah, which is known as the Humash, this particular book right here, this particular book right here, known as the Humash, in the section of Torah reading, where if a Hanan, chapter 4, verse 6, it reads much the same, but let's just compare. It says, Observe therefore and do them, for this is your wisdom and your understanding in the sight of the peoples, that when they hear all these statutes, shall say, statutes, statutes, not statues, but statutes, shall say, Surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Now they have a footnote here. And the footnote says, this is your wisdom. The peoples, Israel, will be respected by the peoples of the world if they practice the Torah, the Orit, the Orit, Torah, Tau, Tawarah, Taurah, the Torah, the law, the instruction, with a full understanding or comprehension of its ideals. Its ideals. Now the ideals come down to, let me just show you this right here, the ideals, because we have to put this together in order to understand it, the ideals. So the Torah has ideals, right? But these ideals are actually ideas. Ideas or thoughts, thoughts, abstract, concrete thoughts, ideals. So the ideals are ideas. Now, 
What makes our wisdom or the wisdom of our Godfather and the Moshiach, Getachin Jesus Christos, above the wisdom of, of other nations? Because their gods are idols. Their gods are idols. And they have these ideologies which are really idolatries. But when the people, as the scripture says right here, when the people shall hear, you know, let's now, now let's put this chapter into context. Let's, let's go back to verse 1 where it says, Now therefore hearken, hearken, hear, Sima'ah, Sima'ah, Yisroel, hear, O Israel, hear, hear. In other words, pay attention, be attentive. This don't listen, but pay careful attention. And that word here means to pay attention. It also means to obey. Obey. In other words, pay careful attention in order to obey. In other words, be instructed by the ori, that perfect example, the example of God's vision, that, that embodiment of his ideals, his ideas, his thoughts. You understand? His way, Yah's way, and not our and not our own. So it says this right here. It says, it says, it says, Now therefore hearken, O Israel, to the statutes and to the judgments, to the sirat. Let's see if that is correct. To the sirat. It says, Ahunem Israel hoy, in dita dergu'acho, behiwatim in dita noru, yaabato chachumhum, I'm like a gizyabi here, what a mia set atchu, a midder get atchu, and it a worsu, ye masa tamarachuhun, sir atina third sumu, sir atina the sir at, and the third, or the ordinance, the order, and the judgment, the order and the judgment which I teach you for to do them. So hearken, listen attentively, O Israel, to the ordinance, the order, and to the judgment which I teach you for to do them, that ye may live and go and possess the land which the Lord God or Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers of your true ancestors, the Beta Israel, the black Jews, the black Hebrews, the Ethiopian Hebrews, our ancestors, our forefathers, giveth you. Ye, you all, shall not add to the word which I command you. Neither shall ye diminish or anything from it, that ye may keep the commandments of Yahweh your Elohim, which I command you. So this now puts it into a better context. It says, Your eyes have seen what Yahweh did because of Bial Peor, or Baal Peor, for all the men that followed Bial Peor, a false god. Yahweh, thy Eloheka, thy Elo, hath destroyed them from among you. So they all have been destroyed, the worshippers of the false gods or the false the false ideas, the false ideals or the idols, the ideologies of the other nations, the heathen, the Goryan, the Gentiles, white supremacy we can say. Verse four, it says, But ye you all that did cleave, that did cleave, which is a man shall cleave, covenant to say one cleave, a man shall leave his father and mother and shall cleave to his wife. You understand? The two will become as one. In other words, will covet it and be in a very intimate relationship. But ye that cleave to Yahweh your, Elo, your Elohim are alive every one of you this day. Behold, look and see. Verse 5. I have taught you statutes the ordinances, the sur'at, and judgments, or the fur, the judgment, the fitr, even as Yahweh, Elohe, my God, Amlake, commanded me, commanded I, that ye, you all, 
should do do so in the land whither ye go to possess it. So the question is, were the Israelites at this point in Deuteronomy, were they in the land? No, they were still in the wilderness. Let's ask another question. Are we the once lost but now found Beta Israel? Are we in the land? No. We, like they, are in the wilderness. We are studying Ori Torah. Why? Because he says from the very first verse that ye may live. Because he is Yahweh. He is the living. Yahai, Yahai. He is the living one that ye may live. That he may live in us as we live in his way. As we live in him and go in. That means repatriate or aliyah, the aliyah, the going up, the returning, go in and possess and take possession of the land which the Lord God of our fathers giveth us. And again, it says, Behold, look and see. I have taught you statutes and judgments, even as Yahweh Elohe commanded me that ye should do so. So what we've been commanded is not so much what we are to do here, but we're to learn it here. You understand? Here we're to keep the Senbet, we're to keep the Sabbath, we're to study, we're to keep His way in spirit and in truth. But some of this we can only do when we are in the land, when we're in that promised land, in, in the gates of Zion, in the African of Sion. So this is now where it leads to verse 6, keep therefore, keep it, protect it. Keep her. Keep the orit. Remember the, 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 the T? We talked about the T in the last part. You understand that now feminizes this now, gives it a feminine energy. Keep her. Keep the tabkuat. Keep her. Keep the commandment. Keep it. Protect it. Guard it. You understand? Therefore, and do them. For this is your wisdom. This is our tibet. This is our hokmah. And your understanding, your bina, your bina, your your ast, your your, your astawal. This is what gives us the astawayinet in the sight of the nations, in the sight of all the other peoples. You understand know of the world, all the other nations and nationalities and ethnicities, whatever they may be, in their sight, which shall hear. All these statutes, the sur'at, all these ordinances, and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. Verse 7, for what nation is there so great who hath God so nigh to them? Because when they see the, the proof in manifestation, you understand, when they hear of these statutes and see what Yahweh has done for us, and how he has blessed us and where we have come from as this once lost but now found people, this, this, this lost black sheep of the family. Surely they will say, for what nation is so great who have Elohim so nigh, so near to them as Yahweh Eloheinu is in all things that we do what? That we call that we call upon him for, that we call upon him for. And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous, so righteous as all this law, as all this Torah, this Orit, or Hig. Now, you, some of y'all may recall the word Hig. We touched on the word Hig from the ancient Hak, which means truth, but in the sense of law, that which is ma'at. And we're going to make the connection with that as we go forward. But it says, it says, And what nation is there so great that has statutes and judgments so righteous as all this, this law which I set before you this day? It's a question. It's like the question His Majesty even asks um, when he says, Come to me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, I will give you rest, quoting the Moshiach, quoting the Son. He says, who can resist uh, an invitation so full of compassion? Question. These are questions we have to ask ourselves as well. Only take heed to thyself. Only check yourself. Take heed to yourself. And keep thy soul diligently. Keep thy soul diligently. 
least thou forget. This is this is what we have to be aware of, forgetfulness. Least thou forget the things which thine eyes have seen, and least they depart from thy heart all the days of thy life. But, it says, but, so that this doesn't happen, it says, teach them thy sons and thy sons' sons. In other words, but teach them to your sons and your sons' sons. This is, brothers, I know many of us haven't been taught this. We haven't learned it for ourselves. Many of us are learning at the first maybe for the first time right now. And I can recall first learning this myself. It was already past the time when I could have probably taught it to my own children. You understand? And, of course, that's a whole other testimony right there as well. But the point is that now that we know, like it says, that old song, what was it, now that we found love, what are we going to do with it? Now that we know the truth, you understand, and now that we know this, what are we going to do with it? We are going to do this. We are going to do this. Now, when it says to thy sons and thy sons' sons, let me just go over this right here. When it says to thy sons and thy sons' sons to thy children, to teach it to them. It, it, it says... Uh, um, it doesn't distinguish sons in the male sense, but no doubt the males, we as the, the men folk, the males, we have a greater responsibility. And we have to man up to our responsibility in God and Christ. The, our true covenant responsibility, but first we have to be orientated out of this disorientated sense. So we're, we're looking to the West, the land of our enslavement, instead of looking to the East, instead of looking to the promised land. So it's especially the day that thou stoodest before Yahweh thy Elohim in Horeb, when Yahweh said to me, Gather me the people together, and I will make them hear my words, that they may learn to reverence or to fear me all the days that they shall live upon the earth, and that they may teach, that they may teach their children. So education is important to the true God, as education is important to the King of Kings and Haile Selassie. He has so demonstrated that. So education therefore is the key. And this is what will prove as we begin to unfold this how and why this is our wisdom. Because some may ask, well, why Torah? You understand, know why is Torah important? Some in a in a apostate sense of Christianity, pseudo Christianity. Um nowadays Christianity somebody asks the question, um is modern Christianity, is Christianity uh, the synagogue of Satan? Somebody asked that question. As you begin to grow in the Orit, the Torah, not from an old Jew or the convert Jew perspective, but from the true Ethiopian Hebrew perspective, you begin to see that much of Christianity does reflect, spiritually speaking, what Revelation talks about, the synagogue of Satan. Because when when most Christians come into so-called Christianity, the, the, the form of Christianity is not the same as that which the apostles taught and preached. And even the apostle Paul spoke about how in the later day they will come for another Jesus, a blonde-haired, blue-eyed, lipstick and rouge-wearing, effeminate Jesus, and another gospel and another spirit, how they change the Holy Spirit to a ghost, and a lot of other like things they basically do. But moreover, because most Christians are taught not to look at the Old Testament, but yet they say vainly that Christ, the Moshiach, Yeshua, or Yehoshua, that he fulfilled all the Old Testament types and, and parables, that he fulfilled the Ori, that he fulfilled Torah, and he fulfilled the law. Well, the true he who is who he is, 
did fulfill it. But how would they know if they cut off the Old Testament and they don't go to the root, the foundation? So Christ, Jesus, Yeshua, the Moshiach, in his testimony, he is pointing to Old Testament. He's pointing to Torah. He is pointing to the Orit. He is pointing to the Nabiya, the Haftarah. So this means for true uh, Nazarawian or Nazarim, for the true Nazarim or the Nazarawian, which it was the true name of the Christian, the Nazarenes, for, the, for true Christians, in other words, the Bible should not be cut into pieces because the Old Testament and the Torah provides that foundation that proves that this is our wisdom and also will prove how the Moshiach Yeshua or Jesus Christos fulfilled that to be the embodiment of God, his father, our father's wisdom. So this is just a couple of pointers on why Torah is important and why we as a new generation coming out prayerfully, hopefully, and, and collectively coming out of this, this spiritual, psychological, and physical Babylon coming out to go in and to possess our promised land for, must first be prepared. And the Orit or Torah is our foundation, is our foundation. And most of all, as Deuteronomy 4 and 6 states, it is, this is our wisdom and our understanding or overstanding in the sight of the nations which shall hear all of this, which proves the condition that the black people, the, the lost sheep, have fallen to because we have forgotten. We have forgotten this. We have turned, our ancestors had turned their backs against this and therefore were punished with slavery and the 400 plus years. Even the iniquity of the so-called Amorites is still not yet full which is clearly demonstrated by the, the situation that we find black people, especially in the Americas and the Caribbean, in, in this very day and time. So we have to take heed to ourselves, and we have to, moreover, know ourselves, know our identity, and know who we be as the once lost but now found Beta Israel. And we have to know our kinsman redeemer. Who is our kinsman redeemer? according to the prophecy. Why did Reverend James Morris Webb said, said, look to Africa, look to the east, where a black man will be crowned king. In him you will find the Redeemer. He said this long before Marcus Messiah Garvey said this. And it's very important for us to understand who was the true proclaimer, you understand, of Rastafari, of Kedamawi Haile Selassie. John the Baptist, we don't follow John the Baptist. He did point to Christ, but later on, even John the Baptist was to doubt. And as Christ said, that among men born of women, there's none greater than he, but in the kingdom, he who is least in the kingdom, the least one in the kingdom, is greater than John the Baptist. Because at a crucial moment, John the Baptist did what we see Marcus Garvey doing. He was offended in the kin, kinsman redeemer. So please be not offended in his imperial majesty. This is an urgent message to our black Hebrew and the Israelite brothers out there. Um, I know there's a lot of questions and one think, oh, Rasta, Rastafari, this and that, so I see we're not Ethiopian, African. But take heed to yourself. Take heed to yourself. More to come, my brothers and sisters, y'all willing.